Hello all and welcome to this and this is going to be two reviews and one because I was planning on doing each show different on two different videos and then got busy, didn't get around to it so it didn't happen. So we're going to do two on one. Not really going to do full um, reviews on both shows and then which is uh, Dragon Gate's uh, Final Gate, Dragon Gate Japan's Final Gate 2011 and then the uh, Tokyo Dome show Wrestle Kingdom 6. And then I'm also going to call, talk a little bit about Chris Jericho and my, kind of my thoughts on the whole thing that he's doing and, and all of that. But <clears throat> I'm not going to go in-depth um, on the reviews. If you want to see star ratings and all of that sort of thing, um, you can look in the description box. It's there um, for both shows. Um, but if you don't know what these shows are, uh, Japan has a history, a tradition of uh, the, the end of the year shows being the big shows of the year and you know Tokyo Dome show being uh, Dome shows in particular and, and particularly New Japan's um, usually puts on a show around New Year's Eve and that's usually the big show and then uh, during when all Japan was really really big um, you know they would they would put on a, a big show themselves and then same thing with Noah that sort of thing, but with wrestling being on the downslide in Japan, as it is pretty much everywhere, um, you know, you pretty much, you have the Wrestle Kingdom show or the Dome show, which is kind of, which is a show that involves pretty much everybody, for the most part, um, particularly Noah, he had some All Japan stuff this year, of course, and, uh, <clears throat> and of course New Japan, and Dragon Gate being the other big promotion, um, because you could you could you could argue that I think I don't even think you can argue it now that uh, Dragon Gate is probably the number two promotion in Japan right now. Um, I would say I think I think you could argue that pretty pretty definitely at the moment because um, No is not in the best of shape, and um, but they are not invited to the Dome show, so they put on their own show, and so I'm gonna talk a little bit about both shows. I'm also going to explain where you can get, if you would like to see uh, Dragon Gate, real Dragon Gate, not Dragon Gate USA, but uh, Dragon Gate Japan, I guess is, would be the, the the best way to put it. Um, there is a site. Um, it is a site that is donate. It's not a site you have to pay for. Um, they do accept donations, uh, and that is Open the Dragon Gate, which um, they put on... Uh, all of the infinities, which to me are amazing, and, and I think everyone should take the time to at least check them out because I think, my opinion, I, I people have heard me say this probably the last couple videos where I said I thought Dragon Gate was probably the best promotion last year, and and it has everything to do with the infinities, which is basically a TV show, and um, also thought they put on at least two excellent um, pay-per-view shows, uh, the uh, Dead or Alive pay was it Dead or Alive pay-per-view? Yeah. And uh, the Daryl Live pay-per-view and um, and the Kobe show, which the Kobe show is 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 a, a, an amazing amazing show, um, in my opinion. But uh, which I didn't review, but, but definitely if, if you have the chance, I, I, that's something else I would say. Go check out, see for yourself, type of thing. But um, but yeah. So, but a lot of it has to do with the Infinities and Open the uh, Dragon Gate does, in fact. Upload those. Also uploads old uh, Toriyaman stuff, which is where Dragon Gate came from, um, and all of that stuff. And it's it's really good. They also got links to other sites where you can uh, learn even more about Dragon Gate, particularly the uh, the angles and stuff. Um, because unlike I would say Noah or New Japan, where I think it's a little easier to understand the angles, where in Dragon Gate right now it, it's not as easy. Um, I think most people. Um, 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 that's really good. <clears throat> Understand that Dragon Gate, you know, is, is very uh, faction oriented, and right now you have the you have uh, Blood Warriors, which is the largest faction, and kind of an in, has turned into an NWO esque type faction, and that's a pretty big thing. And and of course you've also got the fact that they open every show and all this other sort of stuff. But there's actually sites that actually break down the, uh, the the angles for you, so you at least know what they're saying, and knowing 
what the promos are and all that sort of thing. So that helps as well. So I, I just rambled on forever about that stuff. But uh, out of the two shows, I would say I think the Dragon Gate Final Dragon Gate Final Gate was the better show. I, I thought the I thought Wrestle Kingdom Six was kind of a disappointing show. Um, if you've never seen Dragon Gate Pay Per View, let me kind of explain something to you. The other card is usually pretty blah. Um, even though I think that Dragon Gate has a lot of great wrestlers, you know, Dragon Gate, much like Chikara, um, does a lot of multi-man matches. And because of that, you don't get a lot of depth to the card. You get uh, the undercard often is kind of who cares, even in storyline mode, it's kind of who cares. But they usually have uh, a main event or the semi-main event is usually far worth waiting through and, and that definitely makes it better. And I, I think that was the case on this show. I think the second half of the show was, was pretty awesome, to be honest. And I, I think if it was, if you took, if you just took the second half of the show and you stuck that on pay-per-view, it, that would be the equivalent of most of, probably of the, of the last I saw of uh, Dragon Gate USA pay-per-views to give people kind of an idea. But it was, it was a pretty good show. Um, with the uh, Blood Warriors basically coming out on top, having all of the titles, as I said, they're kind of an NWA faction at the moment. So that's kind of how it ended. The only thing I would say, even though I, I gave it an 8.0, because I, I think it was wrestling-wise, it was a pretty great show. Um, the crowd was pretty dead. Uh, I, I, I'm not big on the Blood Warriors basically having all of the belts myself, and there's nothing really going forward that really interests me in the promotion. Uh, so there is that. Um, and really everything on the on the card I thought was was okay to good. Really the, the worst match um, was Cyber Kong versus Kins, uh, <coughs> Kinsuke Sasuke, who I never pronounced his name right, um, who I'm not a big fan of. I'm not Cyber Kong, but Sasuke. Uh, I'm not a big fan of his. So there is that. Um, but that, and that was kind of a, that was a power man's match in Dragon Gate, which just didn't do it for me. But the crowd kind of, I think, really hurt the show, but there you go. But that, that I thought was the better of the two shows, and it's really a, kind of sad that Dragon Gate isn't on the Wrestle Kingdom shows, because if you've watched this show, they were definitely missing something. I think Dragon Gate could have helped really do that, particularly I think if you were to put, stuck the Dragon Gate guys and where they stuck the Lucha guys, I think that match would have been amazing, um, and I think he could have probably done some other stuff too, but anyways, uh, Dragon Gate was, eh, okay, was, was, was great, I, I thought, but I still, it was kind of disappointing, I would have liked to have had kind of an amazing show, I know that sounds kind of weird, but um, I thought it was great, I think it's worth going and checking out, but in some ways it was, it was a bit disappointing, I know that sounds weird, but um, that's kind of how it is. And then we had uh, Russell Kingdom 6, which again, I thought was a little disappointing, but keep in mind, this is Russell Kingdom. This is, I mean, they pretty much even advertised this this year with the with, with everything as being kind of the WrestleMania, Japan's WrestleMania. And, and if you hold it kind of, I'm not going to say to that standard, but um, you do expect something. And, and it's not so much that I expected anything, it's just there was anything that really stood out. And really, after everything took place, the only thing that came out of it that I really wanted to see was um, was uh, Murafuji versus Nakamura. That's pretty much the only thing after this show I really felt like wanting to see. So, and maybe MVP versus Tanahashi, but that's not seemingly where they're going to go. So, but anyways, um, did have a really good opener that I thought was was excellent. Um, and was, 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 was really good, though. I, I don't think it was, given the guys that were in the match, um, you would, ex I would expect this to be as good as a Dragon Gate, sh Dragon Gate match, and it wasn't quite that, unfortunately. Um, the six man with the, where they brought in, uh, oh, I have to say this about, about the opener. Um, Apollo 55 came out to 2001 music. They had actual astronaut outfits on. It's something to see, and it would have been really cool, except then they started playing their regular theme halfway through it, and that kind of eh, didn't really do it for me, but there was that. Then we had uh, 
Jushin Liger um, and a bunch of other guys with a bunch of Takamichi no Oku being one of them, Tiger Mask 4, he, he's getting better, I guess. I, I'm, I'm starting not to hate him. Um, <clears throat> with, a lot of, with a bunch of Lucha guys, this was... This was okay. This was pretty good, I guess. It was fun. Uh, they really, in my opinion, only really messed up one big spot. And uh, and that was kind of a big... You know, if you have Dorada on your, on your, in the match, and you're doing the big, let's everyone do dives, he probably should be the last guy doing dives. And he wasn't. I mean, that was a mistake. But there was that. Um, let's see. Was there anything else that really stood out? Um, not really. I mean, the the tag team title match was was pretty good. Was very good, I would say, and so was the uh, Noah New Japan tag match. But that was very good, which of course led that was, oh, that was very very good. Um, mainly because I, I thought the Nakamura um, Mura Fuji stuff was really good. I didn't even thought the Nakamura Go stuff was really good. And um, so there was that. But the last two matches just were not there. Uh, you know, the, the Mudo match went way, Mudo match went way, way too long. We didn't know it need to go that long. Particularly if he's going to go over, just just get it over quick. It doesn't need to be there. And then Tanahashi, I'm not the biggest Tanahashi fan in the world. And um, it was, it was good. It was, it was pretty good, I would say. But um, again... It really didn't do anything for me. The, this, this show really was missing that great, great show. I think if it had a great, great match, I think if it had just just one great, great match, it would have it would have felt a little better. But it just didn't have that. Um, even I think the MVP, you know, the MVP match. Who you know, I've been that he's the reason why I've been watching a lot of New Japan. Um, I even thought that came off just a little flat. I just thought everything came off flat. I don't know if it was because it was in the Dome show, but there was a lot of people there. So, and that way it was a success. But as far as me enjoying it, eh, not so much. But it was that. So I would say, you know, definitely if you want to check those two shows out, definitely check them out. Um, particularly if you were a fan of MVP, it's definitely worth checking out. The MVP Shelton Benjamin match is, is, is a good match. It, it's, it's not a great match, but it's, it's a good match. And also, if you have not seen Bad Intentions, um, Carl Anderson, who has vastly improved since the last time I saw him, um, or over the last year, I would say, particularly, well, I shouldn't say that, since, since he started teaming the Giant Bernard, he's gotten much, much better. And um, that match is definitely worth seeing, because I personally would love to see Bad Intentions and the Briscoes. I'll never get to see the match, probably, but I would love to see that match. Um, so that was worth saying. Um, I really thought Segura Goto match would be really, really good, and um, that match disappointed me as well. It didn't it seemed really short. I really thought they could have given that match some more time, but what are you gonna do? But so I, I did feel that it was just both shows. I would say were disappointing only because I was expecting a lot more out of them. But I, I definitely think that. I would definitely recommend everybody going, probably checking them out and seeing them for yourselves and kind of just getting, you know, that whole thing. But anyways, and like I said, if you want to see Dragon Gate in Japan, good. I'll put a link in the in the description box. You can go check it out. It's worth checking out. I, I definitely mean that. Particularly the Affinities, which I think are definitely definitely worth checking out. And they usually put them up with, I think the latest I've ever seen them go up is probably a week um, after they air. So there you go. So, anyways, um, and then we have Chris Jericho, who, of course, re-debuted last week. Didn't say a word, and I wasn't too big on it, and then did the same thing this week. And my thing with, with this, and I just kind of want to get it off my chest more than anything, is um, I personally kind of get what they're doing, and I, I like it, and I think it's interesting, and, and all of that. My problem with it is... And this is just me being probably overly critical, but <clears throat> there's if you ever take a writing class, or if you ever take a creative writing class, or if you, particularly if you take an advanced one, they talk about writing to your audience. And artistically speaking, what you want to do is you always want to take your audience, and you always want to write a little bit above your audience. Um, I would imagine that's the same way with with uh, script writing and, and just about any other type of storytelling. You always want to go a little bit above your audience and kind of have them just just 
having to grab just a little bit above their heads, but not a bunch. Um, you don't necessarily want to do it <clears throat> on their level because then um, it's easily get bored with. You don't want to do it under their level because then they kind of feel like you're talking down to them or you're talking beneath them. And then you also don't want to go too high because if you have too high, then you have two problems. You have either you're talking down to your audience, depending on you know what you're doing, or your audience just isn't going to get what you're doing because it's 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 too over their head. And I really think with the Jericho stuff, just from me watching, and just from other stuff I've seen, and people I've interacted with asking about it, who are not big diehard fans, um, just they don't get it. And I think that while I think there's a percentage of the fan base that gets what, the, what they're doing, I think there's a large extent. There's a large percentage of fans, particularly watching the show, maybe not in the arena. I think people in the arena is a little different. I think I think the people watching the show, I think it's it's different. And I think that those are the people that probably aren't getting kind of what they're doing. I think if you look at the first the first time they did it, it lost the viewers. So it didn't lose a lot of viewers, but it didn't gain any viewers either. And I think the reason for that was it went a little too long. Now, tonight's didn't go too long, and I think that that's good. I think went out, this thing, left, and that was that was good, and did the whole crying thing, and I think that made it a little bit more interesting. But again, my only problem with it is I think that they're aiming a little too high, and I think that while it's interesting and all of that, I think they have a ten. They, they have a. They could lose the audience before they even are going to start doing what they're going to do, and if the idea is to keep doing this until Punk is done with uh, Ryder, then you know yeah, I, I think you definitely have. You have the possibility of losing your audience, and I think. That's a mistake, but that's my only issue. I've rambled on enough on this video. Um, as I said, check out the link below. Um, check out the shows. I, I definitely think that they're that, uh, even the Tokyo Dome show. I think is the least worth checking out, even though I was kind of disappointed in it. But that's only because I had very, very high expectations for the show. But that's just me. Anyways, that I'm out. Have a good one.